everyone. Welcome to the Prima Marketing Facebook page. This is Karen Tamir here, and I am really excited to do a new Facebook Live. And I'm going to be using the new Lavender Frost Collection. It's a beautiful, soft, colored, shabby chic style collection. Perfect for the how Prima is with lots of little flowers. And I'm going to show you a little bit of it. I have the A4 paper pad, but it does come in other pads like the 8x8, 6x6, and also the, of course, a 12x12 if you're a scrapbooker. I did not get those. I only got the A4, so I used that to do an altered project, which is the one I'm going to create today, but I just want to show you the beautiful designs on this. So there is a lot of really nice vintage-looking papers, but also really flowery and very soft, so you can use both sides for things. So that's really, really nice. There is a bunch of them of the same type. There's another one. It kind of looks like a ledger and more flowers, roses, and other flowers. So that's really nice as well. Let's see. The next one is this pattern. More flowers, different kinds, and this one. This is for the A4. I think the other one is a little bit different. Look at this beautiful wood grain. And this one comes, I think, in the 12 by 12 as well because I've seen it. More roses, so it's really, really pretty. A lot of vintage elements, so that's really nice. Something that looks more like a lace pattern and some more flowers. Another lace pattern, a little bit different, and some of this plaid kind of color or checkered, so it's really nice. And oh, this one, oh, this is the same one, so hold on, yeah. And then there's this one, which is a ledger, but it has like these flowers at the edges. And the back of it is also. So there's a lot of planar papers that you can use for backgrounds, which is really, really exciting because sometimes that's hard to find because you end up having a lot of busy papers. Of course, it comes with lots of beautiful flowers, which I will show you as well as we go along. Today, I created this altered spool, and I made it into a clip-on photo display. So I glued this clip on here and I made this really nice um, butterfly thing. I glued it here at the edge. So it basically stands like this, but for all purposes, I need to put it sideways so it really shows how it looks. So you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put this one aside. I took the pictures off, this pictures of my daughter, but I took this off because I wanna make sure that I keep this in frame over here. Now I have a little box with everything I pre-cut, everything, just because I wanted to make this go quicker. But I want to show you the spool that I use. This is a ribbon spool. So as somebody was mentioning before, don't throw out things. I never throw out anything. But this was a pretty thick one. And it was perfect because I could create something. Now I wanted to, I'm using this to kind of raise it up. So it's like um, a wooden dowel with like a metal stick if you don't have something like this this came like that but if you don't have something like this you could use even a cork from a wine bottle and stick a metal into it or a stick and that would work as well i really thought originally to put it through here but i thought it would be too short and i really wanted it to stick up a little bit more so i ended up gluing it on top i also pre-cut the circles so these I pre-cut from, oh, where are these papers? I don't know why I didn't show you this paper, which is, a, I think it's the last one. Maybe that's why. Where did they go? Oh, there it is. This is the back, or the back of, the, of the wooden paper. I guess I must have skipped that one. It's a really pretty one. It was one of my favorite ones. And I use this one to cut the two circles that go top and bottom. And I also use it to cut the butterflies. So I use quite a few of these. But the nice thing is that this A4 comes with five sheets of each pattern. So it really is nice for that. So I cut the two circles, which are I'm going to glue top and bottom. I also cut from one of the ledger papers, the one that has these flowers. I cut the strip that goes across. And I'll, all I did is just measure how tall it is. As I said, I cut these butterflies out of that same paper for the front and back. So that's really nice to have it there. And what else did I do? Okay, that was it. Oh, and I have the paper clip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these circles to the edges. 
and that's really easy. I'm going to use some soft matte gel. This is a very simple project if you have the right stuff, but you can decorate it any way you want. It's just basically having the spool and saving it from other projects. I mean, from yeah, because if you use the ribbon, then you can just go ahead and and add it to and just save your spools, right? And then you can use it for anything. So, so as somebody said, they're gonna go dig it out of their garbage because if you use your ribbon, you might as well save something so you can create a really nice project. So this is, I mean, simple. All I'm doing is gluing it. You can use any type of glue. I like using soft matte gel just because, first of all, it's really easy to apply, but also what's nice about it is that it dries matte. So if anything goes beyond the surface of what I like, I can just, it won't look like glossy. It will look quite matte and it will hide. It's a kind of dries transparent. I'm going to do this one on this side. So it's quite easy to do. And if you have any leftovers, of course, you can use scissors. So you see, I mean, my circles were not cut perfectly. So I'm just going to trim it. Another way of doing this is also, if you want, you can use some kind of distress tool, which I'm going to use in a second. I'm also going to glue the inside. That way it holds. And that I am going to just glue this. So I just measured this. And, and you can do this, obviously, with any type of paper, whatever colors you love. It doesn't have to be these soft colors, but it's a really nice gift idea, even for teachers to make something like that, a photo holder for their classroom or for grandparents or for parents or for whoever you want, basically. So that is there. So look how pretty this paper is. Um, I'm going to use uh, the distress tool while this is holding. I want to distress the edges and kind of remove any diff any leftover leftover paper it also gives a really nice distressed look sorry i'm trying to talk over this this is an amazing tool i wish prima would bring it back i haven't been able to find it in many places to show people what it is but for those of you who have it or you can use any sandpaper or any distress tool that you have that would be fine as well so i'm just kind of evening the edges and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this is quite easy. And it just gives it a really nice effect. It does make a big of a mess, but I can just wipe it with a baby wipe. So there we go, we have the spool. Just cleaning it out a little bit. There's my spool. Look how easy it was to just turn it into another color. Just use any paper. If you let's say you like dark papers, then just use dark papers, you know, like you don't have to use the light papers like I did. Like this is really cute for a girl's room, but if you want to do this for like a photo clip for a boy's room or for any type of other stuff, then you can just use darker colors. You can make this any way you want. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this one on top. It doesn't really matter which side you use. Some of it will get covered anyways. I am going to use heavy gel for this one just because I really want this to stay. And I'm going to apply it to the bottom of the spool. Now you could paint this in white, which I might just add some other stuff later. Most of it will be hidden and behind the flower, so that's why I'm not worried, worried too much about it. So that's quite easy. And as I said, if you don't have something like this, all you have to do is just take like an old cork or even just anything and just stick it on top. Like you can get a piece of metal or wire. I mean, something strong enough. And that would work as well. So anything goes. Cork, I think I, I figured cork would be the easiest. I mean, it might not be as wide as this one, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it actually will give you more space to put flowers and stuff like that if the cork is smaller. I was going to bring an example of that, and I don't know what I did with my corks. I actually saved some of these to show you, because there's some of them that come with lids, but I didn't bring that. The other option, actually, you could like um, use like a lid from a bottle, and it's like a plastic bottle, and just stick up 
piece of metal inside of it. That would work as well. I'm sure you can find some metal pieces, so that works. Now for the butterfly, and I'm going to do this lying down so I could show you. I basically glued it like this on top of each other. And I used this soft gel as well for this one. So before decorating it and de doing everything, I went ahead and added some gel to both of these. Both sides would be good. So I'm just going to do this soft gel again, just because I want to make sure that it doesn't show uh, specifically like the matte color one because of that. Okay. So now this is a little bit tricky and not as easy to do, but I managed. You kind of have to line them up. I line them up at the top. And you'll it will still have to move over. The nice thing about the gel is that can you still move it you can still move it around even though it's stuck to each other, they're stuck to each other. I want to make sure they're lined up and holding. I'm going to get the paper clip. That's one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the paper clip in the meantime before I glue it. I'm going to use it to hold things here. You do need those paper clips to hold. And some of the edges might still have the glue. So you could use like any type of embellishment here at the top. You could die cut basically anything circles, I mean, any type of animal, whatever you want. Doesn't have to be a butterfly. You could do a bird, you could do a star, a moon. So anything goes. I'm just trying to glue the edges and I'm using my fingers for that. Making sure that everything sticks. Okay, there we go. We have the butterfly. Now this is backwards. So you see this is right now it's holding the stick, but eventually I'm going to glue it the opposite way. That way you can actually hold the photo. But in the meantime, I'm just going to use this. Now I'm going to have to use something. You, you, I always forget that things are not as easy to create when you're on camera because you need to make sure that people can see what you're doing. And right now, you probably can't if I hold it like upwards. So I'm going to try and, as much as I can, I'm going to try to show it to you sideways. Now, one of the things I love doing is I love, love, love putting cheesecloth on things. It really gives that really nice soft look to any piece scrapbooks I love using it and I love fraying it you see so what I like doing is I like like cutting little pieces of it and actually open up and making like wisps of it so that way it really looks soft and pretty I think I'm going to add a little bit of gesso here just so it looks nicer oh no not gesso or like um, white impasto paint can go as well so before I do anything, I am going to add impasto paint, which is also really hard as always. I don't know why it is, but the white impasto paint is harder than all the other ones. Okay, so I just want to add a little bit of white to the edges here. I should, I could have done this obviously before I glued this, but I'm trying to save time which maybe wasn't the greatest idea to do that. You could also use um, gesso for this. You don't have to use white impasto paint. You can use any white paint. Um, I just had that on my desk, so that's why I'm using it. I think I must have used it for the original project. I'm just adding a little bit so it doesn't really show in the background. And the reason why I'm doing it, I guess, on top is because I really want it to dry already by the time, by the time I get to it later. That way it doesn't move as much. You can also like add some white to the edges if you want to hide this the car um the cardboard color of the spool. So that's up to you as well. 
Yeah, and it's moving. Okay, at least not glued as well yet. Okay, there we go. So I'm also going to add a little bit of white. Maybe I'll dilute it a little bit with water. That way it will work easier. So that way it hides kind of that really rough look. But if you do like that, that cardboard look, then you don't have to do this part. It does this one, the, the, this white paint covers it much faster that way. Like it is a thick paint, so it does cover well. So does the gesso, I guess the heavy gesso does that as well. Okay, so now that I have this in white, it looks better. I mean, it will be hidden, but it's still, you can still see a little bit of it. So I didn't want it to really show that much. So for this, I'm first gonna glue the flowers and then I'm going to um, put the, the cheesecloth on it. I want to show you the flowers that come in this collection. Oh, there's lots and lots of flowers and I just want to show you some of these. So look how pretty these are. Let's see, where does this go? So I'm gonna show you some of these. Hold on, let me go put this aside for a second. So there's also this ephemera that comes with stickers and see-through stuff. There's these beautiful flowers. There's these ones. I think I'm going to use some of these today. And I've used a lot of these ones. These are really, really pretty. And all the flowers come with these vellum, printed vellums behind. So it's really cool because you can use the inside, the insert as well. Look at this one. This one comes with an actual stencil, uh, lace stencil. And there's some bigger flowers, which I will use as well today. There's this one. There's the mini flowers. Oh, gosh, there's so many. There's these pretty ones. Let's see what else. Oh, there's the other package of the ephemera. There's these with the butterflies that I'm going to use as well. Oh, my God, there's so many nice ones. It's hard to like even know what to use. So there's also these tickets, which I added a little ticket as well onto that these flowers and finally the these that I'm going to use. So anyways, there's so many little flowers. You have to basically choose the ones you love. And that's usually the problem that I have when I'm choosing what to use for these. So let's see. Let's see what we want to use to decorate these. All right, let's start with these ones. I'm going to make the other one I made was more like purplish in color. So let's do this one more pinkish just to make it a little bit different. Okay, so there's a bunch of flowers. I mean, I don't always, I just take out flowers, don't always know if I'm going to use them all, but it's good to have. Okay, so I might have, with, uh, you know what, maybe if I use another thing. Oh, there we go. How nice is that? I now I have like this mount of flowers here. Mount of, of, I mean, this pyramid that I could use to put the flowers on because it's really hard to kind of know where you're going to add them. Now for this, there's two options. I could use like the heavy gel. Maybe I will. Or you could use Fabri-Tac. Maybe, I don't know. I always make a decision later on of what I want to use. But either one would work. Even the soft gel would work. It's just that the soft gel, you have to wait for it to dry. And these ones dry a little bit easier. So I am going to add these two roses right here on the top. And then I'm gonna have some smaller ones kind of fitting inside. I have to take these out. All right. So I mean, putting flowers, you can do that everywhere. Doesn't really matter where you're putting flowers. It's just nice to kind of arrange them in different areas. Now the point of it is that you don't want to all be at the top because you're, not co you're going to cover the beautiful papers. So you want to stagger them. And the way to stagger them is to, same as with scrapbooking, you want to kind of form that triangle. So I'm forming it over here. So I have this one here, there's a triangle, and then the other one could be here in the back. And these flowers are so beautiful. They have these really pretty beads in them. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so 
let me show you here. So you see these beads? They have these cute, cute beads on them. So there's that. And I need one more flower. Let's see. Which one do I want? Okay, I want a purple one. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, there, there's some purple ones over here. So I just go and move around and find the ones that I want. There it is. That's perfect. So, so you have one, this set here, so it's like a set of threes. So it's always good to put a set of threes, let's say at the top, then I have a set of three here. And let's see, and I think it needs, let's see how I did it over here. Yeah, it needs kind of something here at the top. So, so I always go and do that. Oh, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be to, to create this sideways. But it's okay, I managed. All right, let's see. I'm going to add a butterfly as well. Let's see, one of these purple butterflies or these white butterflies, I'm not sure. They already come with sticky on behind them, but I think I might actually, um, oh, they work. So that's cute. There we go. Now I want to show you what I do with the cheesecloth. So since there's already glue behind things, all I have to do is just basically stick a piece of it and just open it up and it works. So for example, let's start with here. Sometimes I lift things. Can you guys see? Hold on. Let me put this backwards a little bit more. So I lift one of the flowers and I kind of stick the cheesecloth in between them without hiding the flower. So I try my best not to hide it. Now I'm going to do it up here. Let's put that back on. I need something to lean it on. And I need another piece of that cheesecloth. And again, I'm going to lift this up a little bit. And since it already has glue, it just sticks itself to it, which is why I like doing this after, because otherwise it gets very, very messy. If you try to stick it first, it gets super, super messy and it's very annoying to glue. And I do like when these pieces kind of stick out from inside here. So that looks nice that way. And because this is a dual sided photo clip, I want to make sure that it fits on both sides. I mean, so it's pretty on both sides, I meant to say. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to finish it up on the other side. The glue is still pretty tacky that it will work. Okay. And this is perfect because now I'm going to add another one over here. So for example, I'm going to glue this over here. And it holds up perfectly. Okay, I need a purple flower from somewhere. It's a little bit bigger than usual. Let's see if I can make it hold. And sometimes I do need to move things around if I see that. Okay, there we go. So I have to like check it from all sides to make sure it doesn't look weird. And it does. This is too big. I don't like it over there. No, nope, it has to be smaller flowers. So sometimes I do have to do that where I'm checking something from one side and it doesn't look as nice as I thought it would. Let's try a different flower. Okay, let's try this flower now. Yeah, that's better. Because I want to have the flowers to drape down. And you can't do that if you're, if they're like all like bunched up at the top. 
And the last thing is maybe a butterfly here somewhere, the other butterfly, which matches perfectly. Okay, let's see. I need to... Okay, hold on. I need to add some little flowers. So I, even in the other one, I did add some of these little flowers that you can see here. So it's these little ones, I think. Is it these ones? Or is it not? I think it's these ones. I think it's these ones. There's so many little ones. You usually don't know what to use. Some of these are really cute. All right, so let's put some little ones here. Kind of complements everything and helps build some more layers. Let's see, where do I need this one? I need this one over here. And I need these little yellow ones and a pink one. So I'm trying to keep through those three colors very monochromatic that way. So I'll show you soon in all directions. I'm just trying to see where things are missing. Okay, I think a little one is missing here. And then I think we're done. I don't want to add too, too much, although I already added so many flowers. Okay, so this is how it looks. You see the, I think it's missing a little bit of cheesecloth over here. And it already has it over here. And if you do have something that is kind of sticking out, you can always add some glue and make it stick to where you want it. But I do want a little bit more for this one little bunch here. It feels like it's not connected to the rest. It's kind of on the side, so it's really hard to see. Okay. Okay, so now this has that softness as well. So you can decorate it any way you want. It doesn't really matter, right? It's just a matter of preference of how you like flowers. Some people like a lot of flowers. Some people like less flowers. Some people don't like flowers at all, so you don't have to put those on. Let me move these for a second. Now the other thing is that I want to glue is this one. Okay, so I'm going to glue this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it upside down. And for this one, uh, let me see which glue I want to use. I want to use the, the heavy gel for that, just because I want it to actually stay. So I'm going to add this on both sides inside here and you can use any cloth cloth pin craft pins prima ha used to make these for their collections and um, those would work as well if you have any if you've hoarded any this one said smile so i really liked using that and it just holds over there so you can put the pictures on top which is really really cool and the last thing i want to do Literally, the last thing I want to do is I want to add some paper texture. I love, this is my favorite thing to do now, is to add some paper texture to basically everything. I really love doing that because it adds such a beautiful texture to the edges of things. So let me show you what I mean. And for this, you the best thing to do is to either use a palette knife or to use a really hard brush, one of those that you've ruined. So I'm gonna do that. I have one of these old brushes that are ruined and I'm going to add paper texture. You could also use gesso. The reason why I like the paper texture is because it has that greedy texture and it's white. If you had the white texture paste, anything basically works. So I like doing that is that I like grabbing some of it and adding it in some areas oops that's too much on top of some areas what it does is that it adds a really soft highlight to each flower you can also add it on the spool if you want to this basically that's your choice so i love doing this part it's I do this to almost all flowers. I also added it a little bit to this metal wire. It kind of 
made it a little bit more distressed and hid some of that other color because that color technically did not match the rest of my project. I also, you can also add it to the wings of the butterfly and it makes it look really cool. So basically everything. It's really good to hide any mistakes that you did with it. So it really helps me sometimes when I make mistakes or when I want to add texture that really like, it's the perfect medium for that. So if you wanna hide anything, that's where you use it. So you see, you can even add it on the spool. It looks really cool, but not everywhere. You want to kind of spread it out. You make it look as if that's part of the background. Because if it's everywhere, then it doesn't look distressed enough. I'm just turning it around. And I, I, I'm excited because I actually just bought myself one of those Lazy Susans. I've been wanting one for a while and I thought to myself, oh, why don't I have this? So I could just, whenever I'm doing projects that are like, you have to turn around, it's really hard to do that when you are using your you know your hands for it because I, sometimes I need both my hands in order to work. So that is something that I'm trying to accommodate. And I thought a lazy Susan would be perfect for that. I'm sure I'm not the one discovering this and people could, I'm sure have been using them for ages, but I just thought, oh, I should get myself one. And I keep on turning until I'm done with what I made when I covered all the flowers I think I did okay so that is it this is my project for today oh wait actually I forgot to add hold on I did add this little oh hello tag on it I forgot about that you don't have to do this part but I thought it was cute just because I have it so it would be like a really cute gift to, to give. So let's see, I could cut this off and glue this underneath here. Let's see, there we go. Um, I did add a little bead here, a little satin crystal in the middle of the butterfly. I forgot that. So I'm gonna do that as well. You, don't have, you can avoid this step as well. I keep on remembering things that I'm doing for them. Let's see, which one should I do? They're so pretty. Some of them shine. Okay, so I could add one of these, I think. That would be cute. Oh, shoot, you can't see what I'm doing even. Yeah, I added one of those in the center. And let me add another one of those in the other side. And that is it. I really wanted to create something that was really simple. I hope it's simple enough. It was just a bit hard for me to maneuver with it, but it turned out really, really cute. And I really like it. Let me. The butterflies are die cuts that I have. Um, you can use any die cut that you may have. And um, so I just cut the two butterflies with my die cutting machine basically my big shot and I just cut two of them and glue them back to back if that makes sense so does that yeah so how did I make that's the butterflies and the, and the circles I did trace the actual spool but for the butterflies I actually die cut them I cannot cut such beautiful butterflies that way however you could uh, print a butterfly from the web trace it onto your paper and then cut around it. I mean, you don't have to have die cuts for this. You could just make your own and just print a beautiful butterfly from the net. Um, if you put like print coloring pages, usually they, you get the silhouette. I would cut it out and then trace it and then cut it out again, if that makes sense, if that helps. I can mention, this is a Tim Holtz, one of those large die cuts, the butterfly one. Uh, you know those thick ones? I don't know, big dies are called. This is a butterfly. There's different shapes. Either they have um, they have the dragonfly, they have a bee, 
a butterfly, there's a moon, there's different ones. So all you have to do is just use one of the die cuts. And I've seen it, other companies have it too, not only Tim Holtz. There's other companies, I think Cherry Lean Designs has a beautiful butterfly. There's lots and lots of different ones that have it. You could also, I mean, do, a, like I know Prima, for example, used to have one that was um, it's like a doily. You could use a doily. It doesn't have to be a butterfly. So anything goes. I mean, you don't have to do a butterfly. I just love butterflies myself. But it could be any, any type of thing. So, for example, for the Moonchild collection, that is another new collection, you could like cut, do use that one and maybe cut a moon out of it. There, there is one that has a moon on it. So And save your stuff. Save the spools from your ribbons. Save any metal cork. Now, if you want to add that metal onto, onto the background, cork would be a great idea to do this. I'm actually going to keep these two projects. I'm going to give them away for get teacher gifts, teacher's gifts for my daughter's um, teachers. Because I think it's such a cute gift, like to give away. So that's what I'm doing with these ones. Oh yes, and if you please, if you do make a photo clip with uh, with this idea, it doesn't have to be on a spool, but just the idea of how you make it. Please share on social media. Tag me so I can see it. Tag Prima so they can see it. So Sharon can see it, and we'll for sure look at it, comment on it. We would love to see your ideas. If you have any other ideas, um, or you're inspired by anything, so please share, share, share. We would love to see it. And I just want to say thank everybody for coming today. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. That's really how one of the most important things for us is for you to share. And if you have any ideas, please share them as well. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye. <laughs>